Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this short video I'll talk about some of the logistics of putting your artwork into print. Just how easy is it to reproduce your paintings? I hope that you find this helpful here on YouTube. Please do subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see some more videos like this. And also consider joining me on Patreon, where you'll gain access to all of my full-length tutorials and much more. But enjoy this. Prints are a great way to generate further income from your artwork. Some artists like to deal only in originals, but for many artists, Prints are a much needed extra boost to the income. They also provide a way for anyone to purchase a piece of your art and support you as an artist. Not everyone can afford a pricey original painting, but prints give people other options. As a general rule, I always keep a digital copy of everything I paint, especially my non-commissions that will be put into my print series. I have a full video on how I make my digital copy. I normally scan my work. I will also take photographs, but it's usually the scan that I'll use in printing. But I go into much more detail in my video all about scanning and photographing. And I'll add a link to that at the end of this video. But don't underestimate the importance of a high quality digital copy. Even when you're using a good scanner, your image might not look exactly how the original looks on screen. You might have to use some editing software to adjust the image further. Before I had my own scanner, I would visit a local print shop where they had some scanners and I asked if I could handle my work, so if I could place it face down on the face of the scanner. And they were always happy for me to do that because it meant they didn't have to handle my original pastel work. And again, I go into more detail on how I scan my pastel work in the other video, which I'll link to. But I would then take that digital file and play with it a little on Photoshop, usually with the original image right there beside me. And now bear in mind that each computer screen makes things look slightly different. So it's still not completely straightforward to get that digital image to reproduce accurately on paper. Making prints takes a bit of experimentation and unless you're going to buy all of your own expensive equipment, you're going to need outside help. I eventually got my own scanner, but I continue to use the services of a wonderful independent printer who I value highly. You need to shop around. Your best find here will be another artist or professional who does quality art printing and colour matching. This is a service worth paying for and once you've experimented with a few more commercial type printers in your area, you'll quickly realise the value of working with someone who has a really good eye for colour. And you find this by shopping around, ideally in the area where you live because it's nice to get to go and actually feel the prints. Proofs are what practice prints are called. So get several proofs in your area and see if you can get anywhere close to your original. Don't be afraid to go back to a printer and make small adjustments. Get more proofs. It might take several proofs before you hit the perfect formula. When I give my image to my printer, I give him two files. I save one in RGB and one in CMYK. RGB is how you save your file for viewing on a computer or a screen. CMYK is the extra colour information you want to give your printer. By giving my print guy both files, it lets him use the screen version, RGB, to view the image for making adjustments. He is able to get my work to print out really close to the original. After experimenting on high quality papers, we landed on a great formula. A heavyweight paper with a nice finish. And it's guaranteed for 70 years, so it's pretty fade resistant. And that makes me able to reproduce my work in a high quality art Geekley print. Geekley is just the higher quality art print range done on better art papers. You can charge more for one of a limited edition. I run editions of 50 in my range. 
I also sell these mini prints which are open edition and I sell those already mounted as they're pretty small to pop in the post. They're small but they're the same quality as my larger prints. So you have options with sizes and whether you go limited edition or open edition. And within that, there are also two different price options. You can choose to produce posters rather than art prints. These are normally done on a cheaper, less quality paper and are perfectly suited to being open edition. This is a charge less, sell more way of thinking. Personally, I try to maintain a really high standard in my prints and I'm just happy that I find someone I can work with on my limited edition range. So I'm happy to pay more, to charge a bit more for a high quality product. If you're just starting out, part of the learning curve is going to be pinpointing which images are going to be your best sellers. Your best seller can sometimes be a surprise to you, so try to avoid getting too many of any one image printed at the start. Try to deal with your printer on a print per seal basis. It might cost you a little bit more, but I think that you waste more doing it the other way. So you've got your artwork reproduced well. You can then choose to sign, name and number your print if it's limited edition. I even include a small certificate of authenticity with each one. But in regards to signing your print, there are many ways artists choose to do that. I like to leave a bit of a border around my prints and the title etc can go just underneath the image. Most people will frame this with some white border showing, but I suppose they can also choose to hide it. You could also sign the back of a print, but when it's limited edition, I think it's nice to display that. And that leads me to the last thing that you might want to consider. If you make your original compositions in popular standard sizes, then that's inevitably going to make your print range more likely to fit shop-bought frames. To be honest, this is a great idea, uh, but I just find it a bit too constrictive. I just love to work in different shapes and sizes, so not all of my prints will fit standard frames. But it is something to consider if you're trying to be really smart about this in the long run. If you're planning on exhibiting and selling your prints, then consider getting a few framed, or at least mounted. When I did market stalls, I had both, and I used cellophane to keep the mounts clean if they weren't in frames. And if you're planning to sell online, then consider packaging that can be posted easily. The easiest is to roll just the print and post in a tube. I have done all of the things I've mentioned, and over time I can see which images sell best for me. It's certainly another interesting aspect to the art business that's worth taking seriously. Either way, you'll need to market your prints at physical events or online. It's worth putting the effort into making the best quality reproduction of your work and knowing that they will do justice to your artwork. Do remember to check out my other video all about scanning and photographing your artwork as that goes into much more detail about that process. But I hope that these tips help you get your digital file to print accurately and find its way into the hands of your supporters. If you're interested in seeing more videos like these, then please do hit the subscribe button and visit my channel. Also consider joining me on Patreon where I have a full library of real-time tutorials and lots more. But thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling.